Hello, and welcome to Fieldwork Fails. This program is a partnership production between the Florida Museum, Guts and Glory D&B, and the Alachua County Library District, sponsored by the National Endowment for the Arts, Big Read. I'm so excited to present the scientist to you tonight. One magical thing about our Fieldwork Fails storytelling series, and I think the reason it's been so popular is because it allows the scientists to be scientists and be that part of who they are, but also to be human beings first. And storytelling really allows people to be their most authentic and brave self, even when it's scary and might feel vulnerable and like you're putting your whole self out there. That's our point. So we always tell our scientists, you don't need a PowerPoint presentation. You don't need data. You don't need research. You don't need a lot of the things that would normally back you up and maybe make you feel legit. You just have to show up and be yourself. Storytelling has a way of doing that for any group of making us our most human selves. So even when we can't, this is something we say in all of our shows, even when we can't relate to someone's literal experience, we can relate to the humanity, to the emotion in their story and to some of the details around their experience. So we hope that regardless of whether you came for science or stories or science and stories, that there's something for you tonight. And I think you'll experience a lot of bravery in what our five scientists have to share with you this evening. Laurel Kaminsky is the digitization manager in the Lepidoptera collection uh, of the Florida Museum. Her favorite type of food is stir fry because there's an unlimited amount of veggie combinations. That's a very good reason. Laurel is a lichen expert. I guess you could say she likens lichens. Ha ha, Taylor, I haven't heard that one before. Um, what's even funnier though is when I tell people I study lichens and they look at me and they say, you study werewolves? No, those are lichens, which are mythical creatures from underworld. I study lichens, which are a symbiotic relationship between a fungus and a, and a photosynthesizing partner. Florida has lots of cool lichens, but I'd like to share two adventures uh, from my masters um, with the genus Peltidra. Peltidra is really common everywhere in the United States except Florida. There's only about 10 populations and these remnants uh, from the last ice age. So you might be wondering what Peltidra looks like, but we'll get to that later. Um, so the first time that I saw Peltidra, I was working in Boise State University. My boss was a snowbird and he had collected Peltidra polydactylon from Ovino State Park. I thought, no way could this be right. For one thing, polydactylon sounds like a dinosaur, not a lichen. And for another, the closest population is the Southern Appalachian Mountains. So definitely not in Florida. I decided to take out a book, and since I had the specimen right in front of me, to compare it to images in the book. Nothing really matched. So I decided to get onto Google Images, and I typed in Peltidra, and Florida and pressed search. Again, most of the specimens didn't match. They were too small, too big, not the right color, different features. And then there was a Peltidra that had two arms and two legs. It was a woman who, was, who had a big smile on her face and a nice tiara and long flowy hair. She was out in the woods and she just looked so happy. She also wasn't wearing any clothes. I was looking at nude photos at work. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to get in trouble. And then I also felt really horrified. Like, you know, when you're thinking of when you're when you're doing something and you think that it's wrong. That was like where I was. And so I was trying so hard not to look at these images, but she just looked really happy and really carefree. And I was a little bit jealous and drawn to her. I shoved the thought aside and I thought, no, I need to figure out what lichen this is. After about another hour of searching, um, 
I gave up because uh, there really wasn't any good match. But I thought, I'll figure it out one day. Um, so fast forward a couple years later, I'm a year and a half into my master's and I need data and lots of it. So I hatched this whirlwind trip to go to three state parks in three days, starting um, on Christmas Eve. A couple of weeks before going on this trip, I had to notify the park rangers that I was going to be collecting in their park. The permit didn't specify if I needed, if I could call or email. So I thought, oh, calling is so much more personable. It'll be great. I'll get to speak to them and we'll have a good chat. So I took out my flip phone and I called and left a voice message. Clearly, I was behind the times because I never heard back from them. So the first two days of the collecting trip were really intense. Um, I just was driving a lot, doing a lot of field work, working 14 hour days. And the first two state parks were busts. I could not find what I needed for my research. And I was really frantic. And I was getting really worried that I was a failure and that this trip would be a failure. And I just threw all my energy into just thinking about these lichens and trying to just salvage this trip. I wore myself out. So on day three, uh, I pull up to Toria State Park and I decide not to check in with the park ranger. Eh, I'm too tired, I don't wanna do this. Nothing bad will happen. I'll just grab my specimens and I'll go back to Gainesville. And so um, I grab a map and I just start walking. By some miracle, I stumbled upon this stream and it had all the specimens that I needed for my research. I was pretty, I just felt relieved. And so I'm running a transect, collecting every 20 feet or so along this beautiful ravine um, when I happened to peer down. And there, right at the edge of the water, was this big grayish mass. And I thought, that's not, um, that's not a leaf litter. That's not something that, that looks, that looks alive. Could it be a peltidra? And so I walked down carefully over this soft, squishy moss to the water's edge. And I picked some up and it is peltidra. It was my first time seeing it in Florida. I remember trying to feel happy and excited and to savor that moment. I didn't really feel anything. I just thought it. Eh, I'm just exhausted. I'll feel excited later. So I vouchered it and then I just continued on. A little while later, there's another specimen that I really wanted to collect. And so I just was really exhausted. I just thought, oh, I'm just gonna put my hand underneath and I'm gonna catch this specimen. I'll and so I took out my knife and I cut down, but it was really tightly adhered to the bark. And so I had to push down harder. Unfortunately, the momentum carried right, the blade sliced right through the specimen and deeply into my right ring finger. I could see the white flesh in the inside of my body. I freaked out, I really freaked out. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna bleed to death. And then I put a Band-Aid on and then I thought, and then I started freaking out again. Well, maybe I'm going to bleed to death. And so I thought, well, should I call the park ranger? Oh, no, I didn't check in with them. But I decided to call them just in case I needed help. So I took out my flip phone. I had jotted the number on the back of my permit, and I called them. Of course, they weren't really expecting a researcher and demanded that I come visit them. I thought, oh no, I just ruined the permit for everybody, all five of us on it. So going back to the ranger's office, um, I go into the men's restroom and I just have to like try to clean the blood out of this wound. And so I just remember getting blood like all over the sink, all over the floor, and even in like little crevices between the tiles. And, um, the ranger told me later that they had just cleaned the bathrooms that morning. 
The ranger though was just glad that I was okay and safe um, and admonished me next time to leave, to, to email them instead of leaving a message. And so then I got in my car and I just started driving back to Gainesville. The ranger had given me a printout of like where the emergency room was in Tallahassee since I couldn't get that information on my flip phone. And I pulled off on that exit and went into a parking lot. And I remember just sitting there and thinking, should I go to the emergency room or not? And I just was so tired, I couldn't even decide. So when it stopped bleeding, I decided to uh, just say, well, it'll, it'll heal. I don't want to deal with this. I got back in the car, went to Gainesville. Um, that night, I got my first migraine, and I felt super exhausted. Um, and that the migraine went away after a few days, but that tiredness lingered, and it actually intensified, and it morphed into depression and suicide, suicidal thoughts for the next three years. Tired and exhaustion were just buzzwords. You know, like when, um, so yeah, thinking about this, you know, science sometimes is really great, but it can also be used as ways to avoid asking ourselves what it is, what's going on. We just throw ourselves right into the research. And so, for me, I had to go to, when I went to therapy, that's when I started figuring out, untangling all the connections. Remember that nude goddess from Boise State, that nude Peltidra? I really was jealous of her. And I was just so exhausted all the time from just running away from myself and from the person who I was inside, a woman. And so I transitioned and now I'm very happy. And I am a Peltidra. I am a woman who likes being out in the woods and I like having lots of fun and I'm very happy out there now. I leave my clothes on though because um, there's too many bugs and ticks in Florida. So in case you were wondering what a Peltidra looks like, here I am. As for the lichen, you're just gonna have to Google it. Thank you.